And who know where the fuck it came from? What I'm saying is that once you start digging into shit, man, the whole essence of it is gonna disappear. The fact that people speculate how was it made, like I think that's just best for the sandwich. I think that's what makes it more unique and, and just like a, a, a myth, you know what I'm saying? Like it makes it a relic, you know what I'm saying? Like where the fuck this shit is at? Like this shit's so special, we need this shit. So let's not dig into it, man, you know what I'm saying? Let's keep our mouths shut, let's keep our eyes closed. Let's just enjoy the motherfucker, eat it, and keep it pushing, man. Hometown hero, the legend of New York's chopped cheese. 15 years here, I've never had a chopped cheese. What is a chopped cheese? Is that a grilled cheese sandwich? Never heard of it. Ah, oh, you're talking about like an Italian cheeseburger. Honestly, I first heard about chopped cheese from my daughter who just started working in Harlem. I have no idea what it is. My ima I imagine just like someone took like a stack of American cheese and just chopped it. I was born in New York, so I'm uh, going to be 70 in a couple of months. I don't know. I don't know if I've even heard of that uh, sandwich before. Chopped cheese? I have never heard of this sandwich in any kind of, never mind a bodega, in any kind of food establishment. It's like a hidden secret. How would I describe a chopped cheese? All right, so the easiest description would be a steak and cheese, but instead of it being actual steak, it's hamburger meat. You chop it up, throw whatever kind of cheese you want, whatever kind of toppings you want. The best description I would say is a wonderful magical sandwich that has tested times and it's mythical and it's, <laughs> it's one of the best sandwiches ever created in New York. If you want to understand New York, then you gotta understand the chopped cheese. Despite its status as a bodega icon, the sandwich has never gained the recognition of more mainstream staples like hot dogs and bagels. But a recent wave of attention, including a primetime cameo on Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown, has caused fierce debate about who the sandwich belongs to and what it means to New York City. What is ch chopped cheese? Yeah, yeah. Chopped cheese. Yeah. What is chopped cheese? I have to, I, I have to see. Where does this come from, this uh, mutant uh, cheese? <laughs> Get the chopped cheese. That's ground beef, lettuce, oh. tomato, and the toast your breath for you too if you want it like that. Frank, this shit feel like three in the morning. Aki shit like, like I need it like a chopped cheese right now. This is New York City's answer to the Philly cheesesteak, and most New Yorkers don't even know it exists. It's chopped up ground beef, American cheese, lettuce, tomato, mayo and ketchup. So it's almost like eating a cheeseburger, but it's just on a sub roll. A fucking sub roll? The fucking Midwest. Get the f nigga, bitch the fucking door. It's called a fucking hero. I was basically scrolling down my timeline and I saw this caption that said, New York City's answer to the uh, Philly cheesesteak. And I'm, I'm already, you know, Insider Foods is notorious for finding foods. So I'm like, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, don't tell me they did it. Don't tell me it's the chopped cheese. I click on the video and it's the chopped cheese, of course. Here goes. This is New York City's answer to the Philly cheesesteak. It's not a Philly cheesesteak, it's a completely different sandwich. And like everyone knows I'm from Harlem, all of my fans are like, oh, you gotta make a response to this. We took a trip up to Harlem. To Get the fuck out, now. Y'all niggas know that a Philly cheesesteak ain't the same thing as a chopped cheese, right? And they're not different versions of each other, right? It's two different fucking things. Y'all motherfuckers got Columbus syndrome and shit, wanna be exploring and discovering shit. What did Christopher Columbus do? He came saw some land, there were people on it, yet he just completely ignored that and said, yeah, we discovered America, boom, like, we're here. And that's basically kind of like what it was with like the chopped cheese. Oh wait, nobody in New York City knows about it, right? And most New Yorkers don't even know it exists. Wow, this is so cheap. Like we discovered this new restaurant that nobody knows about. Meanwhile, everyone's been coming to this restaurant for like their entire life. Oh my God, Becky, only $4? That's such a steal. That's what happens with West Harlem as more tourists start to come and it becomes a sort of landmark or a sort of tourist stop where everyone wants to come and buy these cheap things. I feel like the chopped cheese one day is gonna be served on like a panini, like pita bread with like, you know, like toasted down for like $13 and served at like five star restaurants. Just don't be coming to our hood and trying to raise the prices. It's like, if you wanna bring it back to your town, you know, where y'all all can afford that shit, y'all all making, you know, uh, six figures or whatever, like fuck it, make it $11 in Williamsburg. Out in Brooklyn, a butcher shop did just that gaining New York Times coverage for its high intake on the chopped cheese. Their version raises questions about the difference between respectful tribute and blatant ripoff. 
ground beef, grass-fed, grass-finished, American cheese, banana peppers, because I wouldn't feel comfortable without them, a little relish of mustard, pickle relish, and ketchup, classic long roll, juicy tomato, juicy lettuce, secret ingredient, hot Mr. Mustard, hot mustard, and our world-famous marrow butter. And we want it to be ripping hot, because we want full, full browning, kind of like smash burger style. And that's the kind of the approach that I have. When we first started serving and put it on the menu, we knew that people wouldn't know what it was. It definitely was not expecting like a, this complete tidal wave of like attention for this one little sandwich. First of all, when Pete Wells came in for his three day tasting, it was kind of like a joke, like an inside joke, kind of like Pete Wells is back. And then for him to write about it was just a cherry on top. I have a feeling it was his first experience with it. There's a fine line between um, just complete copying, complete uh, pirating of ideas, and, and tributing and, and, and referencing and honoring. I mean, that's kind of our vibe of the Meat Hook in general. We're sort of borrowing a lot from different regions and cultures. Our hardest job is trying to impart to people why it is that we need to charge what we do, particularly for anything that involves beef. You know, at some point, our beef is gonna be so tainted that the corner shop is not gonna be able to sell chopped cheeses anymore. People come and visit our shop and they take away something and they go back to their neighborhood and they can say, hey, well, these guys are serving like a sustainable, sustainably raised, like grass-fed, grass-finished chopped cheese. I'm able to really show that I'm, I'm a lover, I'm not a hater. I'm here to like spread the gospel. I'm here to show people like, this is my version, this is our version. I think we need more versions. I think, I think it's a, a sandwich worthy of being copied and of being replicated everywhere. Hollis Deli in Queens is home to another version. The bodega doesn't claim to have invented the chopped cheese, but its fans are fiercely loyal to what they think is the best tasting one in the city. But even more so, some feel like taking the chopped cheese out of its natural environment is swagger jacking at its worst. I know Williamsburg is fucking the chopped cheese up. I know they are <laughs> trashing the chopped cheese, bro. So yeah, you're telling me that is yet. bad news. Like, so like this is terrible dollars. news. The fact that Williamsburg is stealing a chopped cheese and selling it for 11 cash, doesn't surprise me, because that's what's already happening in Williamsburg. Anybody like Williamsburg. who's from Williamsburg doesn't even live in Williamsburg anymore. Bro. It's probably yeah, on like some like rise. Reuben Artisan fucking Roo. bread, artisan roll, <laughs> some bum ass plate. feta cheese, <laughs> <Like> a little <laughs> hummus, a little <laughs> spread of hummus, <laughs> the the bread, like. a little quinoa, a little kale <laughs> instead of lettuce. That's like getting the worst drugs for the highest price. It just don't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We out here at Hollis Deli right now. Iconic chopped cheese spot, you know what I'm saying, on the corner of Hollis and Francis Lewis. <laughs> the best chopped cheese spot ever, so you know what I'm saying we pull up here on a late night, pull up here to get good eats, and of course, the major key, the half and half. Half and half is uh, half water and maybe a half a pound of Domino sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking a cup. First of all, for some reason, Hollers Deli just makes this shit extra messy. So one bite, pause, and everything's just falling out. You know what I mean? It's the most important part though that people forget though. <laughs> the grill gotta be dirty. If you go to a deli and the grill is clean, don't eat there. Don't, you don't want to eat there because <laughs> it's gotta have at least a B rating. Yeah, B rating for <laughs> if, if, you, if your deli has an A rating, you don't want, the, don't lower, the lower the letter grade, the higher quality of the food. <laughs> you can taste every other thing <laughs> that the cook made in that day. If he made a big nugget and cheese, oh, yeah. you taste, bro, on this right now, I taste Eggs and grits. <laughs> right there, and if they get their order right, it's not valid. Yeah. They fuck my shit up twice already. Yeah, they will, they will fuck your order up, you know what I'm saying? This is part I of the culture. Ketchup, I got mail. Here's the thing, if you're ordering a chopped cheese, you don't have to look at the menu because that means you're from here, like you know what the culture is. You're not ordering a chopped cheese off the menu. If somebody's looking at the menu, they probably don't belong in that deal. <laughs> to be honest, I really think it's a hood food. Like, I just think it's in every hood. Like, here's New York City, here's a hood, here's a hood. There's a chopped cheese there, a chopped, like, you get a chop. What's up, boys? What's up? What's going on? You gotta be so quiet. We don't got nothing to talk I'm about. Listen to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm calling. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm listening to you, boss. Great. Tati's lit. Go get you one. Yeah, go right get here. you one right here. Go get you one. Bro, they always see this is why this is what we go through. This is why we eat chopped cheese. <laughs> I bet you in Williamsburg, if you go to get a chopped cheese, no cop is gonna come bother you like that. They try to take everything else from us, New York swag, New York rapping, New York everything. 
At least let us keep the chopped cheese. Bro, that just means we trendsetting. One place where the chopped cheese has been rooted for years is the Bronx, the home to a cooking collective known as Ghetto Gastro. The group created their own high-end version of the sandwich while still staying true to their neighborhood influences. Even so, they argue that not all chefs have license to remix the food they grew up with. Well, we're in the Ghetto Gastro Test Kitchen in the Andrew Friedman home, AKA the Trap Kitchen. Well, it's an amalgam of culture in the Bronx. We're trying to redefine the word ghetto through the culinary arts. A lot of us are from the Bronx. Grew up in the streets. A lot, a lot of the um, dishes that you're gonna have are elements that might seem familiar from like New York City urban cuisine, but we just redefine it. So I used to go to church in Harlem, and I was about six years old. My first girlfriend, Shakira, what's up, baby? We cut church and left. She's like, "Yo, let's go get a chopped cheese," and I'm like, "Yo, what's that?" Like, she's like, "It's a sandwich." You don't. This is like '92. I'm like, "Nah, I never heard of it." So she put me onto the chopped cheese, and you know. That kind of solidified the love in our relationship. It's uptown, like the culture of the Bronx and Harlem, it's like the boroughs are almost, they're like relatives, they're like sisters or really close cousins. So for me, it's like the same shit, you feel me? But if, we, if this was selling in a restaurant, probably like, what, 60? For all of this Kobe? And then at that point, we can't call it the chopped cheese no more, we call it that chopped steeze. You know, there's levels to this, man. You, you might get a chopped cheese on the block at your local bodega, but when you rockin' with Ghetto Gastro, you're gonna get that chopped steez. I think it's so regional, and it's like a fairly new creation, but this chopped cheese is something like that started in our lifetime. I think you still have youth, youth that have ownership over that food, something like a, a tortilla. That food's been around for a thousand years, two thousand years, you know? So, People aren't as angry about it. It's just been a part of American culture for longer. I mean, getting back to the question of April Bloomfield, but when you're charging $15 for a sandwich that's $4 and your place is called White Gold, I mean, you kind of have you it coming. You can't open enough. It's you like, come on, you know? You're throwing it over the plate. I'm a firm believer that once you put something out in the world and you create it, it no longer belongs to you. So it's like, you know, people can do whatever the fuck they want. But like that, that also opens you up to criticism, you know? Just like, all right, bet. Like, what's her relationship with the chopped cheese? I think there was something to the effect that you can have it guilt-free. And I was like, yeah. what the fuck does that mean? Like, you know what I mean? The food that I eat is like, I, mean, I don't feel guilty eating the chopped cheese. I mean, in my eyes, there's a way to describe on the menu or when they bring the food out, they're like, you know, this is where this originated from, or even put something like that on the menu, maybe pay homage like that, maybe like Haji's chopped cheese. I mean, it would be almost insane, like if you really wanted In the to descriptions, like, you, you know? really wanted to pay homage. Imagine April Bloomfield or any top-notch chef Coming having a sandwich the, for $4. I think that would be awesome, an awesome challenge to, what can you do for $5? Like what Brooks is doing at Superiority Burger, yeah, like bucks. he's doing $4, $4 sandwiches, $5 sandwiches that are awesome. Because it's always like the poverty tourism, digging for gold in the hood or whatever, hood foraging, I like to call it. Maybe there's a way where a portion of the proceeds to go to an organization like an edible schoolyard that are doing edible gardens in these neighborhoods in East Harlem, Brooklyn, and the Bronx, where they're ordering chopped cheese. But as far as like the best chopped cheese that I know of, I would say it's over there, 176 oh. Jerome. I mean, I don't know. Also, can't forget about Haji's in Harlem. You know, big shout out Uptown. I mean, ground zero. The quest to discover the roots of chopped cheese brings us to Spanish Harlem, the spiritual birthplace of the sandwich, where one bodega in particular has been credited with starting the wave of chopped cheese. Claims of invention are difficult to verify, but loyalists of the bodega are convinced that the legend of chopped cheese began right here on the corner of First Ave and 110th Street. Hey guys, welcome to Spanish Harlem. Thank you for stopping by at Haji's Grocery Deli. It's about time that somebody gave recognition to the famous, famous chopped cheese in Spanish Harlem and throughout New York City. Forget what you heard and what you seen. This is where chopped cheese originated from. But anybody who know anything about that sandwich or anything about Harlem culture, Spanish Harlem culture, they know that it came from Hodges. First of all, you gotta give a rest in peace to Carlos. He's the one that really mastered it and put it together, showed these gentlemen how to do it. Five years ago is when shit started popping off because you had a lot of, um, you had a lot of white people going uptown. That's what they got, you know what I'm saying, when we went uptown. But this shit been here for two decades. 
That's why I became the hub. And anybody who deny it, they don't, they don't really know what's going on. They really don't know the culture. And I've been coming here for about 10 years. Yeah, I've been coming here for a long time, getting chops and stuff. The best chopped cheese sandwich in the area. That's all I get when I come in. I live right above. Tastes good. Like, it never changes. It's like the best hangover food. See, Haji's like, they're one of the first bodegas in the neighborhood that, was, that became Aki. You know what I'm saying? Before that, it was a lot of Puerto Rican, a lot of Dominicans. What Aki means is the term we give to the, the, the Pakistanians or the Afghanistans that live that that come and work in the bodega, we call them Akis, short for whatever. You know what I'm saying? The same way, um, motherfuckers call me poppies. The same like it's a term of endearment. The chopped cheese sandwich was different because it, it was different people 20 years ago when they were the only people with the chopped cheese. They were the only motherfuckers that was Akis in there too. Home Yemen, in my country, they have some something called it uh, fahsa, and some call it uh, dakka. Dagga means like the, the, the mind's meat. That is a meat, you know, chopped it up, onion, green pepper, yeah. with vegetables and stuff, and make it nice. The chopped cheese is where it come from. I remember being a young motherfucker out here, seeing DMS come out here. Damon Dash, God bless, when Aaliyah was alive, he would bring Aaliyah over here. Jim Jones, Dipset Crew. Cameron family's right down the block. They live in 1199. They'll become famous, they come and show some videos here. Like this store is like a fixture like how Cats is with they pastrami sandwiches down uh, downtown. I don't know too many bodegas that have their own name. You feel what I'm saying? Like we just call shit the bodega. Like I'm going to bodega on, on 111th. Yeah. This shit has at his own name, Haji's. Well, I see a lot of people, different people from Brooklyn, from Manhattan, from downtown, from West Side. They come from, everybody come from the chopped cheese. Most of the people here, they like the chopped cheese yes. more than any other stuff. I make like um, 150, like 200, 250. On, on the weekend, sometimes we, we run out of the bread. The bread is a key element into making a good sandwich. Now, the difference is, is something called la plancha. It's like an iron, two irons put together that flattens the bread. So the best time to eat a chopped cheese for me would be at the wee hours of the morning, man. Two, three, the devil's hours. When the freaks come out at night, when you high, amazing, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know this ain't this ain't filet mignon meat, you know what I'm saying? But when you high, it's gonna feel like that shit is sirloin steak. That's why another reason why it's so popular too, cause of the price. Five dollars, five fifty, depending where you at. Three dollars, yeah, you get it on the road. You know what I'm saying? Like on the road, it's cheaper. Once mainstream get it, they throw their little price on it, man. You know what I mean? They gonna have to raise it because we've been cooking this sandwich for 20 years. These motherfuckers is charging ten dollars for this shit, or nah, man? We getting raped. We gotta put it up. I'm not mad at it, man. I'm not mad if Anthony Bourdain, man. I'm not mad if Emu Lagasse want to make it on his show. I would love to see it in the motherfucking restaurant in Kentucky. That's fire because you got a piece of Spanish Harlem in Kentucky. You know what I'm saying that's important. I think it has become a premier New York sandwich, absolutely. Besides pizza, we never really had that one like kind of sandwich that really stood out in New York culture. And I feel like this has become that clear winner of that. We always want to be number one. We always want to be in competition. We from New York. Why are we ordering a sandwich that's from Philly? Like, nah, it's over. Like, now we got our own shit, so let's get a chopped cheese.